Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Between Us Foods. Um, we're here live with um, some guests. My name is Donita, I'm your host again today. We're gonna be talking about a topic um, that I personally would love to learn more about. It's dance and health. Um, and we have two special guests today. Uh, we have Gabby Clemente and KJ Studio. So hopefully you guys enjoy our discussion. Um, before we start, I definitely want to shout out to our Ooze TV classes happening right now. Um, check out our website, our Instagram to look at our schedule. Um, we offer live stream classes from many different teachers, different levels. Um, that way you can continue your dance journey and uh, keep staying in the community, growing, keeping with your passion, stuff like that. But without further ado, let's get started. Um, Gabby, KJ, woohoo! Hello. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> thank, thank you guys for being here today. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. It's always so crazy being like connected through the internet, like in a live stream. <laughs> I know. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited to talk to you guys, to discuss with you guys about this. Um, first of all, like, what is health to you guys? How important is health in your life? How do you fit it in your lifestyle? You can start, hey, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Me, you? Who? KJ. <laughs> okay. Um, well, hi, everyone. My name is KJ. Uh, for I think health, the most important, I think it's probably the most importance in my life. There's something that I've been telling myself lately, and I've been telling others and classmates that health is wealth. And it's super important to invest in you before you start investing in other things in your life. It's something that it's a daily conscious of my mind. And I think, I think the definition of health is dependent on who you are. But for me, it's what centers me, it what keeps me going, it's what grounds me, and that's the most important thing, it's what makes me do what I do best and what I do with love and passion. And if I don't have the health component of my life, then other things aren't fulfilled. So um, I would say it's like my number one, my rock, and like my support for myself. Awesome. Oh, that's a great answer. I was like, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, off that it's interesting because I I feel like I didn't think about health and this is all aspects I'm talking like mental health you know physical health emotional all those all those different whatever defines health for you like I didn't start really thinking about that until like maybe later in college um, and I wish I, I kind of learned that earlier because um, growing up it's kind of like you don't really think about those things you think you're invincible and then when you go through life experiences, um, you start to notice that you do need to take care of yourself in those different aspects. Um, so as for myself, um, it's very important, especially now uh, with a lot of different components in my life, whether it be work, um, the studio, or, you know, just, you know, personal health, like taking care of my body and stuff. It's like number one for me. And I, I learned in more recent years to carve out time for myself. And I think uh, I would consider it now to be probably like one of the most important aspects, especially in a position where, yeah, I would like to give back, you know, and you can't do that unless you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I would have to agree with both of you guys. Um, definitely. I think I was always uh, emotionally connected with myself. I, I would say I'm pretty self-aware. Um, so that came first for me, like as far as mental health and stuff like that. Um, and then, especially now with everything that's happening with the world, um, and I have all of a sudden this change in my life, like I found that, um, you know, like investing more energy into my health really changed the outlook of my situation basically so um yeah like i like in in the first episode i said i i started biking more now um i fixed up my bike all that stuff it's been really great um, i've been been active like starting yeah i've been pretty, pretty much getting active like every day now and i notice a great difference between like my mood and all that stuff um so 
I would agree with both of you that like it it is starting to be an importance in my life and I can see I can imagine myself that um this is something I want to keep if that makes sense uh -huh. you know um but I mean I want to know more about your guys is like how do you fit your this value in your life you know kj you're saying that like this is definitely centers you and stuff like what kind of lifestyle do you live if you can describe it totally uh something that gabby mentioned was prioritizing it so mm -hmm. anything that comes in life comes with time management and so i prioritize the things that mean most to me uh, again one of them being health so something that i've implemented for myself for years even before college like in high school um is putting things in my schedule and making it non-negotiable so if it's in there i'm not going to bargain with it and ask why am i doing this i should already understand why and when i know why i'm doing it then the reason for the goal is to do it is implemented and i will do it so for example i'm always up and this is no lie i'm up at 5 36 o'clock every day and that's even on the weekends uh one i do have a cat so i have to feed her and she's annoying me but two it just starts my day because the time that I am up early, a lot of people are already sleeping or still trying to get it up. So when you add that extra hour or two to your day, there's more time for myself. So I guess a daily routine would be like get up at 5.30 or 6, feed my cat. Um, and the first thing I do is meditate. Meditation is the first thing I do, the last thing I do at night. And I use the app Headspace where 10 to 20 minutes of just centering myself. I think a lot of help is mindset. It's mentally, it's mentally preparing yourself to get on with the day. Um, I would meditate and then I typically would work out for 30 minutes to an hour and a workout for me would be more like a high intensity interval training. So it's only 20, 30 minutes, maybe two sets of three to four exercises each and I get out of the way and it's done. And then I'll go shower and then go to class. I usually have class online. And then um, if it's prepping for dance class, I would be working on like a routine or training myself at least daily. Uh, I've been part of this thing called uh, with Project Home called Homework. And we've been working on freestyling and sessioning. So I haven't really dove into that as much. So every day I'll at least session three to four songs, whether it's good or bad, I'll still do it just so I'm keeping myself active and moving. Um, and I just repeat that each and every day. So I've built up this stamina for so many years that it's a norm normalcy to me and it's not mm -hmm. foreign, which is why I think if you've taken my classes, I have a really intense workout or cardio because you should stay, you should train to dance, don't dance to train. And I can go into that later and what that means. But I totally 100% believe in that. And that's the routine that I've been living for so long. And that's where I've been at, at this point. Tight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so crazy. Cause like, uh, I wanna be like a 5.30 in person. Like that's my goal to work towards. Um, one thing I will emphasize is that like this whole like journey of health is what it is it's a journey so you're not gonna pick up these habits that you want to get to right away and and i like i said in the beginning of this like i didn't pick up anything like um like working out that's a huge priority for me right now um i started working out just last year uh but i mean working out can be anything but honestly like gym and like uh carving out an hour of my time just to make sure it's just me only and i do not disturb type stuff i can agree because like you have to make time for that um at one point you know i felt guilty i guess about like feeling like there are things that i prioritize about myself and i think that's just a upbringing thing for me um because like when i grew up uh you know with first generation um immigrant family you know like they all sa self-sacrificing all the time um, in, in different ways, you know, like whether it be working 24 seven, whatever that may look like for them and like providing for their family or my family, um, sorry, broke up, but it's just more like, um, I think I just like trained myself early on as a kid, like to not ask for things and not think about myself as much. And that's why I'm saying like in recent years, I started thinking, wait, like that's, that's that's not really a good way i guess of doing it because you give up so much of yourself that again you can't give back and um i got to a point where i was like all right i'm gonna make sure that if i want to help you know influence the world in a positive way i have to take care of myself um and that meant for me at um last year to you know focus on my physical health so i started working out and i got a personal trainer um last year to help me get that started because Another thing I learned 
was um, sometimes you have to ask for help, especially if it's going to be professional help. Um, and I wanted to get a trainer because someone who knew how to work with someone like me, who know nothing about lifting, nothing about squatting, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I knew nothing. Um, and so I really wanted a professional to help me. And yeah, that, that literally was like one of the best decisions I've ever made. And because mm -hmm. of that, like I've created the habit of working out every day, whether it be you know, doing the lifts at home here and like investing my own quote unquote home gym, whatever knockoff gym we want to call it, um, to like even just walking every day for like 30 mm -hmm. minutes. I found it really meditative and enjoyable. So I guess going back, um, you know, my day is very flexible because of COVID. I still work in the morning, so I still have to wake up for work. I try and eat breakfast right before I start. Um, I set up my workspace so that, um, I can focus on work. Um, so I still have a job. My day job is at City Hall in San Jose. Um, so, you know, nine to five typically. Um, and then I make sure before I focus on studio stuff or like think about the studio, I was like, okay, I got to work out in the evening. And so mm -hmm. I heard about a do not disturb, meaning like I don't check my phone. I don't mm -hmm. like, you know, see if anyone pinged me a really important email. Like I just work out and then I focus on something else. And I noticed even just one hour like to me was super crucial to helping my health in all aspects, you know? So mm -hmm. I eventually want to work to a point where I'm used to this COVID schedule um, and figuring that out. But I think for now, like I'm okay with walking every day or working out every day for like an hour or 30 minutes, you know? Yeah, totally. And like I'm um, hearing from both of you, um, you know, I, when I thought about this topic and this podcast, like I definitely wanted people from all over the map, I guess, in their journey, you know what I mean? So obviously that's why um, I'm excited to talk about this because KJ, you know, you've been doing this for years. It's gonna be great to hear stuff from you. And then Gabby, who's just starting out and then me as well, who's um, like super starting out, you know what I mean? Cause Gabby's already a year in and stuff. So it's gonna be a fun discussion, I believe. Um, for me, like I found that like, I think because of COVID, like I always love to be active, but I think I found excuses. Um, you know, dance was a way to be active for me, but then um, I used to say I hate running, but then recently I was like running. It, I just found out I hated running because it was like I didn't know how to run well, like properly. You know what I mean? <laughs> I could so only agree. Like, yeah. yeah, like once I started to see like, oh, like running's actually kind of fun because I could get to meditate and there's just these like intrinsic benefits that you feel um, aside from like, you know, your time and like how fast you run and stuff like that. Um, then I started to change my mindset a little bit uh, with that. And then I kind of just applied that concept to everything around fitness in general, um, especially with dieting or like nutrition. I say I, I try to avoid the word diet, <laughs> but um, it's a lot about, about, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot about psychology, like why you eat when you do, like why you eat, how much you do, why you eat, what you eat, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like um, I was I have this I'm part of this program where they teach you a lot about food psychology. So it's really fun to learn about like um, what influences your choices throughout the day and like how to basically see the reasons why food is like basically to kind of be mindful about your relationship with food and so I was really, like I'm having a great time with that and like learning about myself and just about food science in general um so for me that's my current status about this whole thing I'm like no I'm not saying like a Again, like all of us, actually, we're not saying we're experts about all these things. I think these are just our own journeys. And like, hopefully you can take, you know, you or audience can take stuff from what we're saying and, um, you know, really apply what works for you and stuff like that. Because we're all, everyone's different. All three of us here are different and stuff. But um, I think one thing in common is all three of us dance, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And then um, again, we we're like we 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 believe that health is important, and so you know what what how would you define the relationship between dance and health? 
or like dance and fitness, whatever, it's up to you how you want to explain that. I think for dance and health in general, it's, it goes hand in hand. And I can, I can only, like, it's hard to imagine an unhealthy dancer. And again, like the conception or the definition of health is for you. But if you're not taking care of yourself outside of the dance studio or the dance world, how can you physically dance? You know, because dance is a physical aspect. Dance is emoting, dance is movement, dance is expression. And I think they have to be working at the same level and you have to invest that same energy with both or else one's going to lack. You can obviously work on your health, but you're not, you know, if you're not moving and dancing, you're not going to feel comfortable with movement. Or you can dance and do all these cool moves, but you're not taking care of yourself. So you're going to have, you're going to hit this roadblock and like be inefficient with your training and your time and your energy. So for me, it just, it's, what I believe in is hand in hand as much as you're dancing is the same as much as you're putting into your investment of yourself and your health, as much as you're putting in your health should be the much as you're putting in your dancing. And again, dance can also be a different definition for you. You don't have to be a professional dancer. You don't have to be someone that's trying to tour and go around the world to teach choreography, whatever that may be. It's still dance is movement. At the end of the day, you have to move and you have to get moving. So you have to, I think, prioritize both of that in order to excel in those specific goals, you know, in either dance or in health. But for me, what I see is, is as one. So that's just my viewpoint on that. It's so interesting. Every time I talk after KJ, it's <laughs> like, you know, like I, I guess going to my journey, at least uh, in the beginning when I was starting to dance in college or even high school, you know, obviously my reasoning for dance was strictly like the social, um, emotional kind of like that getaway um, you know form of expression for myself but I'd never considered um, I guess the physical toll as much as I should have I guess um, because in the beginning when you know you're on a collegiate dance team everyone's just figuring it out you know um, you kind of have these late practices you probably don't eat in the middle of practice um, but I feel like or even before or after um, I remember eating like out after every practice as a show <laughs> thing. Um, but we would go to like, I think like Denny's because it's the only thing open at night. Um, I guess going back to um, the question of like the relationship with, you know, dance and I guess fitness being where I am now in my journey. Yeah, I, I can definitely agree that it's hand in hand. And I kind of wish that, um, you know, earlier on that I knew a little bit more about, um, I guess, the physical aspect of it and taking care of yourself, because I think that I would have prevented myself from, uh, like, just overindulging, <laughs> I guess, and, like, not being conscious of my relationship with food or nutrition, <laughs> because it did affect my physical capabilities, if that makes any sense. So, um, I do think it's hand in hand, especially now, um, you know, uh, when I started working out um before that i had gained like about 30 pounds or so uh, and then i just felt like as my journey of working out um started picking up i found that i was a lot more energetic um i was my stamina was a lot better when it came to taking class um i felt that i was a lot stronger when it came to like executing my movement um muscle memory was a lot more i guess inherent to me um, cause you know, when you work out, you know, you think, okay, you work out your bicep, you know, you're focusing, isolating this. Um, mm -hmm. and then same thing with dance. Like, you know, if you're focused on, you know, having your arm all the way out, you can't even see it on the video, but uh, <laughs> like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're more aware. Okay. Like tricep, you know, and, um, biceps, all this stuff. It's just hand in hand. I mean, this dance stuff, it's, it's a, it's a physical thing as much as it is mental, social, whatever, um, it means to you. Um, and yeah. I think it's all in one giant bubble. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely, you know, I thought about this last night when I was writing this, um, but yeah, it's definitely synergetic. Um, and I think a lot of like, it, it's everyone agrees in the, like from what Gabby and KJ are saying that they're very synergetic in where um, depending on whatever your goals are, you know, they can benefit each other basically um whether you started in your health journey first and then 
you're adding movement into your life or whether you were, you started dance first and then now you're, you know, working out more, they can definitely benefit each other. Um, and I think from definitely from what Gabby said, it's about awareness, I think, um, about, you know, being aware of that and just kind of putting to how these two can benefit each other can take you further in either path you want to take, whether you're just recreationally dancing or if you're actually trying to improve your skills and trying to, you know, make it a career or something like that. Um, I definitely think they're synergetic as well. Um, but, you know, let's actually get to the specifics, like what, besides the overall benefits that fitness brings into our lives, like what specifically are some ways that working out can benefit our dance journey, like our dance, us as a dancer, you know what I mean? Let's start with Gabby this time. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a time. It interesting. I definitely, energy was a thing for me. Um, you know, I, I danced recreation or I still dance recreationally, I would say. Um, and, and dance also the relationship with it now is, is being a part owner of the online studios. There's that relationship as well, the business aspect, but, uh, being f totally personal about it. Um, yeah, like I found that I had a lot more energy for dance, uh, because mm -hmm. I started focusing on, you know, working out, um, and nutrition. Um, and you know, this whole thing about like diets and stuff, it's, it's all different for everybody and you just got to figure out what works for you. I've tried a lot of different stuff. And like I said, I was fortunate enough to have a trainer that I trust who was very intuitive. And like, you know, I talked to him about like, okay, um, how do I feel about being on more carbs or less carbs, stuff like that. Um, worrying about all this macros and all that. <laughs> um, he, he definitely helped me with that. And I think, um, going back to dance, um, I, you know, try and snack <laughs> when I can to give myself energy, um, too, if it's going to be like a long rehearsal or I feel like it's going to be a long day. Um, I also felt that weightlifting, uh, especially for girls, uh, I think there's always this misconception about, um, the fitness interest industry, uh, in general, like, especially with the media, I, I had gym intimidation or what they call gym and intimidation or whatever or like I I would not know how to use any of the machines and stuff um and also being like I said a girl or a woman like you kind of feel like everyone's looking at you and thinking like oh they're, they're doing it wrong um but yeah I definitely would recommend and say that uh, weightlifting has helped me be stronger in my execution like my core especially um because the dances that we've been doing at least with uh, urban choreo is, is very taxing on that front. And so, um, yeah, I would say that, what was the question? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I would say that those are the things that I would recommend is working out. Don't be afraid to lift heavy, be strong, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. What about you, KJ? What are some benefits of working out to dance? Um, well, I think just the benefit for working out in general to translate to dance is longevity of your dancing time and your dancing years. I can say like from firsthand, dancing. yes, and I think, well, I'm going to speak like on firsthand experience, like I had the, like the honor to work with Keone Mari for about eight to nine months on Beyond Babel, and they're over 30, and they still are on top of their game. And you see why, you see the difference between great and good. Great is consistent and they do it, it's a lifestyle. And so when you're under that direction and that training, you totally up your game. And there's no excuse if they are pushing 35 and they have a kid and they're still on top of it that you can't work hard, like there shouldn't be an excuse. So I think I've seen in person and also for myself that I've been dancing since I was nine, now I'm 27 and I'm still, I feel even more in shape than I was back when I was 21 or 22, just because I've been doing this for such a long time. Um, and I. Again, the definition for health is for you. You got to do what you can do. And like, you don't want to overdo things because you can overtrain and you can hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think the second benefit to working out is the preparation to prevent an injury from happening. So the more that you are weight training, like Gabby said, you're, you're focusing on stability and you're focusing on core strength so that when you do have like a little tweak on your ankle or you're falling back and catch yourself, those are the moments you're prepping for before actually getting into that like accident or injury. 
Um, and I think that's what I found super beneficial is being super aware and very in control and knowing where I'm moving and how I'm moving. And if an accident were to happen, I can catch myself because I've trained so much with hitting a squat, deadlifting, hip hinging, you know, using the dumbbells, using kettlebell swings, like all those things play into a factor. Yeah, I mean, I, just to add real quick, I mean, like, it's it's not even just weightlifting. Um, you know, I started trying like, uh, these body flow classes. And it's basically like, a similar like choreo but what and especially with yoga too i take in i take yoga a lot um and so you're just kind of aware of your body a lot more and i think it's super important as dancers to start you know thinking about those things um because it'll it'll definitely help you in classes too um and just your dance journey yeah totally um i could also see i think the body awareness in general um because you focus so much on like what gabby was saying earlier um you're isolating one part of your body you gain more awareness about that muscle and what it feels like when you're actually contracting it and um i think your execution just is a lot better not to mention you can dance a lot longer like think about how long our sets are sometimes like I mean, they're pretty taxing sometimes, depending on the choreo, but most of the time, if you're going full out, it's like, dude, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's when you know, like, okay, stamina. Um, but definitely agree with everyone, what everyone's saying. Um, also, like, just general mood. <laughs> like, I think, like, fitness brings this sort of, um, in like, accomplishment where, like, you kind of when you complete like a workout and stuff, you're immediately like, it just sets the rest of your day. So it kind of helps. I think it helps in dance because it, it helps you kind of think like, okay, I can push myself because I, you know, I completed a workout today. Like I can do anything, you know, that type of mindset and stuff. But um, let's see, but vice versa, how do you think dance can benefit your training or your health? I know KJ, you've already talked about this, but if you want to start, <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, man, dance is, is just therapeutic for me. Uh, it's it's my self expression. It's my voice when I don't have a voice that I can say or write down, and mm. that is like the key thing to an overall health mindset. Just like Gabby was saying, there's a social, there's a mental, there's a physical aspect to it, and that's that's what dance does bring when I'm not either weight training or I'm not doing a hit workout. It's that there's no judgment on movement. Movement is you and movement is an everyday thing. Dance just happens to be either to music or not to music, not to rhythm or to rhythm. And um, to be honest, actually lately in my dance journey, I've, I've asked that question a lot of like, why dance? Why have I been doing this for so long? What does it mean for me? Like, is it fulfilling me at this moment? And I've had to deconstruct to reconstruct my mindset. So now dance for me is, it's just, it's who I am. And there's a lot of, I think, external pressures whether it's via social media or peers or family or friends that expect this product from you or this this uh thing that you have to produce but that's not going to bring fulfillment if it's not fulfilling you and so you have to kind of shut that out and that's what dance provides for me it provides that open and safe space where i'm just creating and just feeling my energy and connecting with that and that is that therapy like that's that's huge yeah. <laughs> I, I had dance first before I really um, was about, uh, I guess, getting into fitness and just, um, I guess, working out. Um, so for me, when I first started dance, and it, it's, it's still very much the same, like to its core, is that it, it brought me to closer to people that I consider some of the best people I've met in my life. Um, and then for my personal growth, it just taught me a lot more about approaching the rest of my life. Um, you know, I think, and um, when it came to transitioning to working out or applying a lot of the concepts that I learned from dance to working out, my determination and like just the hard work aspect, that came from dance um, first, at least for me. Um, and then when it came to picking up weightlifting and stuff, it was that was just inherent because I already picked up the morals that I learned from my peers um, just through my experience and my dance journey. And I think um, the importance of dance, it, it can apply to anything, um, just a seamless, you know, and it applied to my work. You know, I feel like a lot of my mentality, the way I approach going into like, you know, conference rooms or like addressing my, my coworkers and my peers came from my collaborative process 
uh, working with other dancers on a dance team, you know? Um, and so I think dance is itself, of course, like a physical creative art, but they're just aspects that throughout at least my dance journey has improved everything else in my life. And so it's very much intertwined with everything. And um, I couldn't imagine my life without it. It's truly lifestyle as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, dance, I mean, as people from Onwen Studios, I think we, we try our best to basically share that, um, a, like that thought that like dance is more than just dance. Um, there's a lot of benefits to that it can bring not only to you to your health, but like to just everything. Basically, what Gabby was saying, um, specifically like mental health, I think it's a great way to really just focus. And I think people do this as well when they're working out, like they really just focus on your workout and it shut everything out. Like dance can do that for you too. You can meditate and um, focus on your rehearsal, focus on your dance class, you know, achieve your goals in dance um, and just shut everything out. Like whatever happened in that day. Emotionally, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of endorphins that you emit when you, when you move in general. So it's like, you just are generally happy. I was talking earlier about working out can improve your mood, but so can dance, you know what I mean? Um, and of course, physical health, like dance, I think um, people who haven't danced before and are like in fitness, I think what they don't know or what I'd like them to explore is that like dance can bring a lot of like um, flexibility and like just like range of movement that like maybe just focusing on training or like um might not bring you you know what i mean plus there's added things that um dance can bring like community you know social um aspects as well but um dance can definitely benefit our life not just necessarily our it's not just a hobby basically um and you know i think there's a lot of stuff that all three of us have done in our journeys both dance and health and stuff um, from your own experiences what advice and suggestions would you like to offer to people to live a more um i want to say i guess healthier lifestyle but more of like a i guess not that people aren't living healthy lifestyles but like just what advice from your experience do you think help you improve your own growth in everything and all aspects and stuff you know AJ. Okay. <laughs> um, I can tell he's got it, Bruin. <laughs> um, this, I think, this one, the one general theme that kind of brings everything together is asking the question "Why" and starting with "Why." And it's a book I read. It says "Start with Why" by Simon Sinek, and I think that is so important in everything you do in life. Asking yourself why you're doing something. And if you have a goal that's in mind or a vision, it's everything that you're doing in your day towards that goal. So my question to myself, why do I wake up early? Well, I wake up early so that I can start my, start my day ahead. Why do I start my day ahead? So that I can stay fit. Why? So that when I'm in a future, when I'm in a future clinician as a chiropractor, I can take care of someone and show them that I'm living a healthy lifestyle, that I can inspire them to continue to do that and empower them. Uh, why do I move? Because I feel good. Okay, why does that matter? Because I feel good so I can help others. And I think my whole purpose for myself is to heal and to help people. That is something that I believe in 100%. And I've been like that as a kid. And that is why I'm cho I chose to go to chiropractic school. That is why that I continue to teach dance is that's my why. That's my purpose. So once I understand my why, my what and how is easy. I just have to make sure that I'm aligning it with that goal. And that's something that I do every single day. Even when I wake up, I'm thankful that I'm alive. I'm alive and breathing. If you're alive and breathing, life is good. Now that I have the opportunity to work towards that goal, and it's always asking why. Why am I doing this? And is it benefiting me for my long-term goal? Yes or no? If it's not, you cut it out. It's a waste of time. And just keeping it simple that way it makes your life more driven and purpose. And then once you focus on you, you can selflessly help others. I think that's just my whole like intentions for just my whole lifestyle. Yeah, it's interesting because, um, like, I think my one of my advice that I would give to people is that sure you can 
you can, um, you know, figure out your why and like have that center that pretty much that backbone for yourself. But I think more importantly is that you have to understand it's a journey for yourself and to be super patient and understand that you're going to just make mistakes and you're going to learn things through just experience alone. You know, um, I think there's a lot of information out there in the world, um, whether it be like, okay, this is how you properly eat. This is how you do this properly. This is how you do that. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you just got to figure it out for yourself. Um, and also, like I said, uh, if you need to ask for professional help, reach out to those who you trust or, you know, even try seeing um, who can help you out um, because you not you might not know all the information that's out there. So I think, um, yeah, like, of course, keeping that purpose, that sense of purpose is super important to your core. But, um, you know, it's not going to be an end goal all the time. You know, like if your goal is to help people and change the world, you know, uh, when does that quote unquote end, you know, so you just have to look at it as an overall lifestyle that you're going to pick and choose habits that you're going to practice every day. Um, and just be kind to yourself, you know, if you can't get it right the first time and, and be super, um, on top of it right away, you know? Mm -hmm. I think some similarities that I hear from both of you is that, um, it's more so, about the long term like it's about the lifestyle so it's not even just about like let's say you know even when you ask yourself like why am i doing this okay but then you ask why you know what i mean and a lot of the times um you got to pick habits that and be consistent with it um and the goals that you're gonna set like sure you can set like um short-term goals but then overall like it's just about the stability and the longevity that you want to create for yourself I think um and with that you like, everything starts with you. the overall theme is starting with yourself of course kind of like um try things you know put yourself outside of your comfort zone I think that's the only way you can grow whether you're in dance or in fitness, you know what I mean? Or your diet, um, it's gonna be, well, like what Gabby said, it's gonna be hard. Like nothing great is ever easy, but I think you gain so much more than just like that moment. And then after everything, like it just feels great. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it really is what KJ said, like, why are you doing this? Um, find the reasons that motivate you, um, you know? And it's, it's, it's definitely a journey. I think with everything going on, um, being able to just have the opportunity to self-reflect and like try out so many different things. Then I started learning more about myself and I realized that I actually like running, you know what I mean? And like, if I didn't try it, you know, well, how would I figure that out? You know? So it's kind of like just stepping outside of your comfort zone and like, think about what opportunities you can gain instead of like, you leaving behind, I guess. Um, and I think to wrap it all up, um, I guess uh, I want to just ask like a couple, would you rather questions? <laughs> just because um, oh, no. I was curious about this. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's just too, it's like really, you know, it's just like random, like I was writing this, but um, would you rather be able to have enough stamina to dance for an hour straight like no stopping or have flawless body control and be able to pull off any dance move. Which one? Dude, like, so <laughs> it's always these what if questions, you ask more questions <laughs> after, right? So it's like, <laughs> if I were to execute one move like super well, but then I can't do anything <laughs> after, like what's the point, dude? <laughs> uh, I would say stamina, but like, okay. I wonder what that one move flawlessly executed would be for me no it's not it's not just one move i mean like it's like you can execute all dance moves uh, any dance moves yeah so it's like would you rather dance for a long time or just be really good at like body control and execution and just pull off anything you know what i mean <laughs> and i would choose body control and execution <laughs> like that takes a lot of time to like master quote, <laughs> which 
What about you, KJ? I, I would be stamina. <laughs> and I think I just go out like firstly <laughs> who I am. I, was, I think that'd be fun to do, just to dance hard for an hour. I would save it all out there. Like, who cares if I can't do any of the moves? Like, I could. I think I have the energy to, to dance. Like, that's just who I would be if I was in a class. Seriously? Yeah, like yeah. the first 15, 20 minutes of KJ's class is literally like, it's all hit. Like, do, it's like do or die. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> but I, it's I a good thing. I, I, I feel bad, but I don't feel bad. It. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah you always say that but i think it's great and that's why i think people enjoy your class because you know they have that all right i'm glad next question um would you rather eat healthy and not exercise or exercise but not eat healthy <laughs> i oh no <laughs> let me think Okay, I love food. Like that doesn't change. Like sure, like I'll eat like, you know, uh, during the week. Okay, this is my current regimen in my uh, nutrition. Is that like during the week, like you know, I try and eat uh, fairly clean or considered clean. So like a lot of vegetables, uh, higher in protein, um, only carbs on like you know my before and after workout. I don't know. It's just the whole thing. But um, like mm -hmm. so, uh, when I eat like what I want basically like fried chicken and like donuts I feel so bad after like I feel so slow it's not even mental it's just like I physically feel mm -hmm. like I, I want to lay around and watch YouTube all day or something so I guess mm -hmm. since I still love food and fried chicken but I love exercising <laughs> I would probably not eat healthy and exercise <laughs> <laughs> got it you got one to zero <laughs> yeah. so interesting. i <laughs> this is hard I, I wrote down such a hard question to answer dot 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 but i think um <laughs> it's weird i i had a trouble picking an answer i would just say assuming that i can get up and move at least walk and like sit yeah. back down <laughs> and move somewhere else I'd rather eat healthy and not exercise because I would consider that movement and that alone should be sufficient enough for my, at least a daily basis. At least I'm fueling my body correctly. Because I can imagine the opposite where I'm not eating healthy and exercising. I probably couldn't exercise well and hurt myself anyways. Yeah. That's just my mindset. I don't <laughs> well, know. Would dancing be exercise? You know, that's a... Uh... Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but you'd eat healthy. You'd eat those vegetables, right? <laughs> Yeah, I actually don't that show. <laughs> Is it worth it, KJ? Is it worth I don't know. I'll, just, I'll take up my answer. I'll take up my answer. Say it again. So KJ picked, KJ picked um, eat, healthy, eat healthy, not exercise. Gabby, what did you pick again? I chose eating fried chicken and getting to exercise. <laughs> gotcha. All right. I mean, I, I have to be the tiebreaker. You know, if only there was more of us, but maybe we could put a poll on Instagram. But anyways, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What would I say? It's the would you um, rather. I know. Uh, would you rather eat healthy and not exercise or exercise and not eat healthy? Well, I would say my answer changed, I would say, because before, maybe like last year or something, I would probably have picked eat healthy and not exercise just because... I was like, oh, dance is my exercise. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not that it isn't, but uh, I'm saying exercise isn't like, you know. Um, but nowadays, like, exercise, would, I would kind of rather not eat healthy and exercise just because, oh, I, like I said, I like running and biking. You know what I mean? So, unfortunately, I have to say both because... <laughs> just kidding. Um, I would say, as if me would say um gabby what gabby said but past me would have said what um kj said so <laughs> okay take that, take that. <laughs> whatever <laughs> um okay so that's me i'm a libra so i'm like indecisive all the time so um let's see okay but um i think i me personally i learned a lot from from like just hearing from both of you um i hope that our audience also kind of takes a deeper look into what 
dance means to them and what health means to them and maybe how can they input uh basically connect both and input in their lifestyle again something we want to all of us want to uh, emphasize is it's, it's a journey and so you know it's not too late to start um and again like you're at your own pace and definitely like never compare yourself for, like to other people it's really what is best for you um i want to thank both of you for for being here today i think i hope you had fun with this discussion um i think people hopefully you know reach out to their um instagram dms if you have questions about anything that we talked about today um again like with everything going on we i wish everyone has good health you know like everyone is staying safe and stuff like that um do you guys have anything else left to say before we wrap up i think thank you good. thank you yeah, guys. thank you for the opportunity <laughs> Tight, tight. Okay, so before we leave, just a few reminders. Again, Oost TV Live is going on right now. KJ is actually one of our mentors that teach on our live stream platform. Just head to our website, check out our Instagram, um, things like that, and just get active, you know? Um, again, also, um, if you guys didn't know, this is our 10 year anniversary for our Monday night workshop. So, there's going to be a lot in store about, I mean, a lot in store for how we're going to be celebrating our 10 years. So just look out on our social media platforms on some cool uh, raffle stuff, some new like merch launches and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say too much because it is like a secret, but um, just Monday night, 10 years. Um, again, happy to be have been here for that long long again thank you guys for subscribing supporting us um i hope you guys enjoyed this episode my name is donita this is gabby this is kj this has been between us foods peace out bye